There are two types of clients at this restaurant called Earth, the gluttons and the aesthetics. Some make the most of whatever food is on hand, including, if it means not wasting protein or calories, their own skin. Animals' daily diets depend largely on where they live. In some places, the culinary offerings are extremely austere, while in others, the variety and quantity of food available is a positive cornucopia. In some places, what's available changes greatly. Seasons of plenty may turn into ones when survival depends on a few frozen herbs found by rummaging in the snow or the scrapings of tree bark. In the tropics and jungles, animals can often be more sophisticated diners, plump and well-fed. There, rodents can reach quite considerable sizes. But in deserts, survival depends on true asceticism. Only genuinely tough guys can survive with almost no water and very little food. And being either a glutton or an aesthetic has nothing to do with size. The capacity for eating is not a question of weight, but rather a strategy for survival. One of the smallest mammals in the world, weighing no more than a few grams and just over 10 centimeters in length, is one of the most voracious beasts on the planet. The common shrew is a top quality butcher and a real glutton in miniature. The basal metabolism of shrews is very high. They consume so much energy to maintain body temperature and basic functions. Just to survive, they have to ingest food in bulk and very quickly. Shrews usually eat their own weight in insects, invertebrates, and even small vertebrates such as lizards or frogs every day. Much of the day is spent nervously looking around the leaf litter, sniffing out traces of food. At the same time, Shrews themselves are on the menu for many medium-sized carnivores, both birds and mammals. Owls, kestrels, martens and cats are dedicated hunters and consumers of the nervous little shrews. So to avoid being hunted, shrews try to live discreetly. They are active during both day and night, but usually move underground, 
or in the cracks of walls or between fallen trees. And it's in these places where their supplies are found. Their cycle of activity divides the day into several periods of frenetic activity and of rest. A worm is an excellent feast. It provides water, protein, and is easy to digest. Earthworms are much longer than shrews, but once crushed between their sharp teeth, they are an exquisite dish of minced meat that will satiate their hunger for three or four hours. Deserts are home to some of the toughest and most austere animals on the planet. The pronghorn, or American antelope, is a true ascetic, living in the arid regions of North America, from Baja California, Mexico to Wyoming and Colorado. When the first Europeans arrived in North America, there were herds of pronghorn that reached into the millions. they were so thoroughly and brutally hunted that in barely a few centuries, by 1908, fewer than 20,000 were left alive. They took refuge in the most inhospitable environments on the continent. The pronghorn that inhabit the deserts can spend long periods without drinking any water. They get their precarious daily ration from the dew on plants and from the plant matter they eat. They're herbivores of austere tastes, eating bushes, shrubs, herbs, and even cactus and other plants that are toxic to other animals. Despite being easy to hunt with guns, they're still the fastest mammal in the Americas. They are complete athletes. Not only can they reach 95 kilometers per hour, they can also endure long distances at a staggering pace of 65 kilometers per hour. In theory, they can detect any predators stalking them thanks to their excellent vision. They have large eyes with a range like that of powerful binoculars, allowing them to perceive movement up to six kilometers away and a 280 degree field of vision. Their hooves break the salt layer covering the coastal plains and their droppings act like fertilizer and plants grow in their tracks as if in tiny nurseries, contributing to the food chain of the desert. And the benefit is returned as the pronghorn propagate, feed and protect the plants which they themselves feed on. The herds of pronghorn, those speedy ascetics, are essential in maintaining the ecological balance of the desert. Everything that the desert lacks seems to abound in the rainforests of Central America. Water, trees, rain and food, lots of food. This is the home of a large turkey, the great Curaçao, which can weigh more than five kilos. In the land of plenty, almost all tropical turkeys grow to a considerable size. and the great Curaçao is the biggest turkey in tropical America. The males and females are very different. Females have a barred head and a brownish body, the patterning of which varies greatly. 
The males are an intense black color with a striking bill with its yellow knob. Both male and female display their elegant fan-like crest. The great curassow is a forest bird that finds abundant and varied food on the forest floor, where it spends much of the day. Among its favorite dishes are the ripe fruits that fall from the trees. This large tropical turkey shares its territory with others that have more arboreal habits. They walk cautiously around the forest floor, sometimes digging in search of insects, especially ants and delicious larvae. They live in pairs or small groups and take turns on guard duty while others eat. The diet of this greedy turkey is a varied combined platter containing a little of everything, mainly fruits, seeds and insects. Fruit that has fallen from the trees comprises about 80% of their diet, but they also snack on leaves and fern fronds. Their tastes are so highly developed that they eat up to 45 different species of fruit. All tropical turkeys like to eat, whether on the ground or up in the branches of the trees. And each species has specialized in exploiting a different niche in the jungle. The culinary habits of the European common toad vary greatly according to the season. Toads usually begin to hunt with the sunset, and they patrol around outside their burrows looking for something to fill their stomach. Despite their somewhat clumsy appearance, they are agile and determined animals. To get a meal, they ambush their prey, hiding in the vegetation. Sometimes they have to wait a while before something edible comes along. But when it does, they very quickly shoot out their sticky tongue. It's best to wait until dark. It's then that the smallest animals invade the forest floor. The toad's diet is varied and consists mainly of arthropods and other invertebrates. Worms, beetles, earwigs and spiders are very common on their menu, but it's ants that may provide more than 90% of their food ration. The stomach of a young toad has been found to contain 700 ants. As they grow older, their prey gets larger. A good worm is equivalent to capturing many ants and saves time and energy. This toad is very thrifty and does not want to throw away any morsel of food. It may seem disgusting, but its skin contains many proteins that are best not to waste. Little by little, he slowly strips off his old skin.
and carefully swallows every piece of it, turning it over like a glove. The powerful European bison, locally known as the Weissant, can reach impressive sizes, with some large males exceeding 900 kilos. Unlike their American relatives, they're not plains animals, but prefer dense, deciduous forests. European bison form small herds of about 20 individuals, which roam the forest in search of grassy clearings, where buds and shoots are tender and juicy. But in spring, their diet is much more varied. They are big eating animals that feed on all types of plants. Throughout the day, they use the forest as a buffet of assorted salads. During the summer, European bison primarily graze on grasses. To maintain their body mass, they have a gargantuan appetite. An adult male can consume up to 32 kilos of food a day. The mating season occurs between August and September, when food is abundant. It's then that the males fight for control of the harem of females. But the European bison lives in places with two distinctly opposite climates. And when the snow and ice freezes and covers the pastures, and the trees shed all trace of their deciduous leaves, life is very tough indeed. And then the bison's habits also transform. From being able to ingest tens of kilos of grass every day, it becomes a beast of greatly ascetic character. It has no choice but to dig in the snow, breaking the ice with its hooves, or scraping the bark off the trees to digest its limited nutrients. Far from the snowy landscapes of the north, life can be just as hard. It's so hot in the eastern deserts that during the day, there are no signs of life. Only when the moon shyly emerges do the inhabitants of these arid landscapes begin to stir. They move like agile shadows in the dark of the night. The gerbil is an animal that has adapted remarkably to the rigors of the desert. It's a perfect ascetic, a survivor who needs just a few blades of grass and dry seeds to survive. It's so hot here that it's only active at night. It's then that it heads out to search the wilderness for a few tough roots, some shoots, seeds and grains, and occasionally insects. 
The metabolism of the gerbil is so effective that it gets all the water it needs to live from the plants it eats, and so it does not need to drink. Gerbils use their short front legs to dig in the sand for seeds. They're capable of excavating a large amount each night. And by digging for food in this way, it has an effect on the ecosystem, dispersing a great number of seeds and aerating the soil, which improves the circulation of water when it rains. As the light of day creeps over the horizon, the gerbils run and hide in their burrows. A very different rodent inhabits the deserts of Mexico. The small, golden-mantled ground squirrel is diurnal and has to take every bite it finds in its arid surroundings. The squirrels have a very varied diet. They feed on a lot of insects and their larvae and different annual plants and roots. Squirrels store the seeds inside their mouths in pouches that fatten their cheeks when packed with food. With their mouths full, they run to their burrows to hide the seeds. Then it's back to the frenetic search for food under the lazy but watchful eye of a lizard. It's a good idea to rest now and then, if only for a moment. In contrast to the deserts, tropical regions are a kind of paradise for rodents. There's plenty of water and lush vegetation that provides shade, shelter and food. It's no wonder that tropical rodents reach sizes unrivaled on the rest of the planet. But nothing is without its complications. There are also many predators here, ready to sink their teeth into any unwary rodent. The packer can measure over half a meter and weigh up to 10 kilos. They are shy and defensive animals that roam the forest at sunset. They walk cautiously on their short legs and although they are agile, they prefer to make their shelters near water, which they dive into in cases of emergency. Their plump body indicates a big eater who loves the ripe tropical fruits it finds on its careful jungle walks. They're also fond of seeds, tubers, roots, and succulent leaves. Packers carry the seeds and fruit to places they feel safe and protected in order to eat them. And so, they act as seed dispersers. The agouti is a smaller relative of the packer that also lives in the rainforests, but is less water-bound. Its more streamlined body can reach half a meter in length and weigh up to five kilos. This rodent has a light and brisk manner of walking around its territory in search of ripe fruit. The agouti loves to consume seeds, tubers, and different fruits, especially the palm fruit. It often prowls around fruit trees, capable of detecting where and when a fruit falls by the noise it makes when it hits the ground. 
It even follows troops of monkeys that jump around in the branches, eating the fruits the primates throw away. Agoutis may be greedy, but just like the ascetic animals that live in deserts, they are doing nothing more than wisely exploiting the menu that the restaurant in their environment offers. <laughs>